folks, how are you? I hope that I find you all very well indeed and you're all having a smashing day and thank you very much for popping over just to see this wee recipe. Now, I wanted to do a mince pie but I was thinking back to my school days, you know, the other day and this is typically what we would have had, you know, at primary school is one of these big mince beef and onion sort of sheet pies, I call them. You know, it's absolutely delicious and so, so easy to make. You can make this with puff pastry, short crust pastry, Pastry, you know, whatever you like, just as long as it's, you know, it's a savoury pastry. It's filled with some wonderful, you know, really good quality minced beef and onions and gravy. And that's it, you know, do keep this very, very simple. You can, of course, if you want, add in things like carrots and peas, but typically, you know, it would just be, it would all, it would be all about the mince in this recipe. So I'm just going to be using mince and onion and doesn't it look fabulous? And this recipe will give you enough to feed six people or it will give you around six large portions. So this is everything that I used here. Basically, a large onion, a couple of stock cubes, a tablespoon of corn flour, and like I said, some good quality minced beef. I get this one from my local butcher. You want a nice lean minced beef and then your puff pastry and short crust pastry or a mixture of both, you know, whatever you want to use. I actually used short crust for the bottom and puff pastry for the top. I just think it works better in these kinds of things. So the first thing you want to do is get your mince done and out of the way. So heat up your oil, add in your, on your onions and you want to fry these until they're nice and soft. If you put in a wee dash of salt, it will help draw out the moisture from your onions and help them cook a wee bit quicker. Once your onions are soft, pop in your minced beef and you just want to cook this until it's browned all over. It won't take you long, possibly five minutes, just to make sure it's done properly. And as you'll see in my pan, you know, there's no oil, very, very little liquid. That's because it is a very good quality lean minced beef. You don't want loads of liquid in this. Once you're happy that your mince is browned, pop in your oxo cubes or bouillon, you know, whatever you want to use. These are just two beef oxo cubes. Make sure that's well stirred in. And then you want to add enough water just to give you a kind of gravy. You don't want too much water in there, just enough that your mince can simmer for a wee while. And to that, we're going to add some corn flour and also a wee tablespoon of water to bring that to a paste. Add this into your mince so that this is going to thicken it up. Don't put it all in at once though. I would pop in half. Just see how thick it is because you might not need all of that. I didn't need it all. You don't want it too thick. Let this simmer for a couple of minutes. Just make sure there is a wee bit of gravy in there because you're going to let this cool completely. And as it cools, you know, it's all going to just disappear anyway. And it will come back as you warm it up. So set that to the side and get your pastry done. So you want quite a deep tin because obviously you've got your pastry in the bottom, then your mince, then your pastry. So make sure it's deep enough to hold everything that you're using. And this is the pastry that I'm using here. I actually, like I said, used short crust in the end for the bottom and puff pastry for the top. Now I'm just going to lightly grease my tin because I'm going to be putting on some grease proof paper and it just helps to hold it in place and stops it from moving around. So some nice non-stick paper and then you can go straight in with your pastry and I'm just going to keep my pastry on the backing that it came in, you know, straight from the box and this was a perfect fit. Now if yours is not a perfect fit, you can obviously roll it out a wee bit just to make sure that it fits because you do want this edge to edge if possible. And then just go and prick your bottom because we're going to blind bake this and that'll stop it puffing up. You just want to get it nice and warm. You're not looking to cook your pastry. You just want to get it nice and warm through so that when you cook it again, it will cook nicely. Weight down your paper with some baking beans or rice or pasta, whatever you've got, just to, you know, keep that pastry down. Whack it into the oven for between 20 and 25 minutes. Just before it comes out of the oven, loosen up your minced beef. This should be cold by now. And as you can see, it does look very dry. But like I said, as it warms again in the oven, it will, you know, produce the gravy that's in there again. So spin your cold minced beef on top of your pastry. Just remember to remove the, the you know, your, your greaseproof paper and the rice. Make sure there's a wee edge around the side there because you're going to put your other sheet of pastry on top and you want something for it to stick to. I've just made up a quick egg wash. This is one beaten egg and one tablespoon, one tablespoon of milk. Just beat those together and that'll give you your egg wash. Brush it down the sides 
and along the top and bottom. Like I said, we are going to be putting the pastry sheet on top of this, so you want it to stick down nicely. Then once you're happy, grab your pastry. My pastry had been out for a wee while, so it had gone quite sticky. So I'd recommend just to use this straight from the fridge, or, you know, it's going to be quite sticky like this. But it wasn't an issue. you just got to be quite careful with it. So once it's on top, just go around your entire thing. Just make sure your edges are all well sealed and pressed down. You don't need to go around this with a fork or anything. I find that if you just use your fingers, you know, that's enough. As you can see there, it's nice and neat and sealed at the sides because you don't want all your gravy spilling out when this goes into the oven. With your remaining egg wash, just go over the entire top. This is going to give you a nice shiny, glossy top or milk if you prefer. So that's it done. I mean, how easy was that? So back into your oven for between 30 and 35 minutes. Just keep an eye on it and what looks like something like this, then it's done. And I think that is a thing of beauty. <laughs> and it tasted even better than it looked. So absolutely fabulous. And all you have to do now is let this cool down just for a few minutes. Get out of your tray and because I left it on the original packaging, it just slides right off the tray onto my cutting board. And I'm just going to cut this directly on the paper. And like I said, you will get six really generous portions from this. And this just takes me straight back to my school days because this is exactly the kind of thing I'd have got and got from primary school. So just use your knife and cut it into whatever size portions you like. And look how lovely and crumbly that is as well. And the mints in there, you know, it just wanted to drip out all over the place. But it is so moist and tasty. Highly recommended you give this one a go. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. With something like mashed potato and beans or mashed potato and peas. We actually ended up having broccoli. And these are some local Ayrshire potatoes. And a wee jug of gravy just for on the top. Wonderful. Just before I move on, I did want to say a massive thank you to the supporters of the channel over on my Patreon page and to the channel members here on YouTube as well. I'll leave all this information about Patreon and channel membership underneath just in case you want to go and see. But thank you all for watching if you're still here at this point. And as you're watching this, we're actually away for a few days. So this was actually filmed a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, absolutely delicious. Highly recommended. And do let me know if you end up making it and follow me over on Instagram as well because so many of you are sending me your pictures over there which I'm always super chuffed to see so whenever you choose to join me again have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch up with you off a soon back here on What's for Tea. Bye now.